All right, by the way, we're recording. Okay. All right, I'll chop off the front. Fair enough. I think it's dying. Time, it's ready? Yeah. All right, then. Welcome to Borderline Relevant, a podcast by Borderline Tactical Network. This week's podcast is brought to you by my cup of apple crumble flavoured tea and the remnants of a slice of peppermint Ooh. pork. Yeah, that doesn't Sorry, sound pleasant. It's, it's dessert themed and it's very tasty. Uh, joining me this week are Spanny. How you going? As. Hey. And for the first time we have Feynman. Hey, yeah. So, we'll start off with Feynman introducing himself. Uh, hello, I'm Fireman. I have been playing with Borderline Tactical for just about, just under two years, I think. Wow, long time. I play a lot of armor. There's 263 Steam games on my list that I play somewhat all of them. I try at least. As you know, we pay money for all of these things and we make sure we use them. Yeah. Your role in-game? Uh, normally I like to play a simple roughman. But when needed, I step up to FTL. Basically, if I end up being FTL, I often grab you for two IC, because I know that when I die, first and foremost, you don't try and raise me, you just take over. Yeah, you got to sort this shit out, man. Yeah. Priorities straight. All right. And we haven't had anything other than some interesting junk mail through in the <laughs> mails, I believe. Um, I think, I think to hear Ali from the best garments. Yes, the best garment. Um, All you other groups that have tactical in your name and in your email, you might have gotten the uh, similar similar message. If you didn't get your order in before us, then you'll have to wait for all your gear. Just a bit of business to, advice to, to hear. If you're going to like try and sell things to people, leave contact details. Yeah, I've no idea what he's trying to sell. I mean, sure, I love a new pair of tactical gloves. I've got an old pair of paintball gloves. But I've got no idea how to contact you to here. I'd love to sell you tactical gloves. Yes. There is time and place for that. Um, all right, so we'll do the usual bit. We're going to have a quick chat about all the, the um, acts that mainly I have missed due to a busy life. So you can tell me all about them. I shall ask you questions. Um, and then we're going to have a little chat about some loadouts, I think. Because uh, Paz has already put up a video. Slightly more wild, easily, but partially serious about uh, the loadouts we see on our, ta on our server when we do pub nights. Um, <laughs> so we'll have a little chat about what we see and then what our dream loadouts might be and then what we actually think would be set. All right. We'll start off. Spanny, Tell me I about you, Tac. I'll, I'll help Spanny segue into it. Uh, what day is Halloween, Spanny? I believe it's October the 1st. The 30th? Yep, definitely not. Sorry, oct well, see, I fucked up already. Uh, October 30th, and definitely not, uh... Sure, it's not October 31st. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm sure Halloween's you're all correct in Australia. Me, but, uh, yeah. We don't generally celebrate it down here. Well, you, oh, I when, don't even acknowledge its when existence. When I was young, it used to be pretty big, like, I'm talking end of the 90s, during the noughties. Really? I I'd watch, like, the TV specials. That's about it. Uh, I used to go trick or treating. Like it was pretty big around my neighbourhood, and then like I guess in the 2010 onwards, it just completely disappeared. How many neighbours did you annoy with that? Who weren't really no, in no, the no, holiday no. spirit? Like, every everybody used to trick or treat. My house like, got egged once just really? because I didn't give them anything. Last wow. year, I gave out chocolate with a business card stapled to each and every one. Ah, that's, that's <laughs> good work. Marketing. Yeah, anyway, yep. we're missing the segue, Spanny. <laughs> oh right, so in. In the spirit of a premature Halloween, I made a sort of horror-themed mission. Um, it was called uh, Zulu Echo Delta Sigma. You can guess what that stands for. No one else did here, so claps for you. Well, thank you. Um, and how'd it go? So the idea was that they had to extract a NPC. Um, However, I kind of set up in the briefing that things weren't really as normal as they should be, towns are being evacuated, blah blah blah. Um, had them blow up a power station using a really handy script I found from... I can't his name, full name, Toxic? He's on the, he's on the Reddit, he's pretty friendly. Um, anyway, use that. Have to have all the lights actually go out. And then when they w came to the uh, NPC, he was dead. 
went to the RV. That means rendezvous. Uh, they um, yeah, they lost contact with the other guy that was telling them what to do. And uh, then zombies happened. Yeah. <laughs> and just for, just for oh. a time frame, this is about after an hour of walking. Yeah, I didn't really turn for it to go over that slow. Spanny's infamous walking mission. Yeah. The thing is, we've been trained to be cautious. Too cautious. Are we I'm trying to train that out of you, actually. I give you missions where like, you just sort of head hard into it. But then again, I path you too hard, so... I don't mind a good walk, because I'm chatting to people. <laughs> there were some serious moments of tension, I think, out there. Yeah. People were thinking, what the hell is going... And people were getting progressively more and more jumpy. And yet, ironically, when the lightning flashed and we saw our hordes of undead for the first time, everyone kind of went, what's that? <laughs> huh. Yeah, they just look like regular civilians for a distance. Yeah, yeah I remember what, yeah, watching out this video and someone's like, they're unarmed, they're unarmed. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shoot the poor civilians. Yeah. Hey, just for I'm glad some people were creeped out. For reference to the night, I'm going to put up the video of Stirls that um, Azza got. I'm sure oh, yes. you guys know which one it is. I'm not going to talk about it. I'll let you guys enjoy the video. Yeah. Actually, as is footage for the whole night, it's edited. Um, a bit uh, more friendly to watch. Uh, I'll put up both. I'll put up the one yeah. about Stells, and then I'll put up um, as is proper footage. Kind of spoiled it for them now, though. Well, I, I told them what happened to Stells. Or why. At least we got that going. <laughs> anyway, um, after zombies had to move through so. the dark night with fog and lightning. I think they used up all their flares fairly quickly, so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was scary. It was. I hope so. And I we kept splitting up, like, people were getting through. tired, and we just kept walking on, and then I'm freaking out because I'm the medic, thinking, like, oh, God, one of them are going to die, I'm going to get raped. Or, you know, like, eaten by zombies, whatever they do. Yeah, the I only think... really casualties I had was, from, was, like, fragmentation from the <laughs> mate. Oh, God. Yeah, people's already well, made the to be. the frag yeah, from East yet. That did hurt, actually. Ace fragmentation goes everywhere. We did a yeah. mortar training, a mortar landed a kilometre away, and I was hearing stuff hit the building next to me. Yeah. Um, What's the, uh, was listen it, if you can see it, the shrapnel. Was it Azza or Ursh that had the full video? Uh, Azza. Azza. But yeah, that was... Zeds. Zeds. I think they got extracted, yeah. yeah I enjoyed it, it was a refreshing... And Hopsaw got mad at me for not being able to land a Chinook on the dark on top of Green Mountain. And I got to blow stuff up, so it's all good. But everyone was happy. Yeah. And then we had, uh, Paz's yeah. one. Uh, using the mortars. I, yeah, I put one in Kavala, seeing as we just, oh, I put the, um, wind module in from Ace, so the mortars work properly. Because we just learned out, uh, sorry, we learned how to use mortars, like, without the computer and all that stuff. Uh, so, teams went into Kavala. They cleared out all the churches, and they drove a truck around and basically took all the, the civilians out of the churches and put them into the trucks. Oh, got I was truck that one. A, Yeah, got the truck yeah. to a safe zone, and then they were free to use mortars on the rest of the town, as well as yeah. the Kabbalah Castle, which is a nice um, ending to it. That's right, there's a, um, there's a little bit of a court-martial pending, isn't there, fireman? <laughs> <laughs> Not my fault you ran behind an enemy. So, it was a nice close quarters mission. Uh, we didn't actually use the... Uh, oh, I think I gave you guys uh, IFV. We ended up using that. It was all like, uh, I guess, infantry based work. Which um, me and Spanner have been chatting about. We're trying to like move back towards, you know... Uh, sorry, feet on the ground rather than everybody in a vehicle. Yeah. Even on the mortars. Um, we got like nine or so fire missions. We didn't kill a single guy. <laughs> You must have shot, uh... You did, actually. But like, really? Oh, I didn't get a yeah, single... Yeah, because when we went, we went, when we breached the final objective, that castle, we found corpses. Yeah, they might have just not been dead because of the A system. Maybe. Because Ace lets people go unconscious and You'd double tap them just in dead. case. Yeah, yeah. But it was Pope and I, um, ranging it in. And, um, we both ranged in the same target because... <laughs> Not that I don't trust Pope's calculations, but I just really needed to be sure that it was everything was on the level. I wasn't going to frag you guys. Yeah, we're actually being like a little bit overconfident. We're staying right up against the castle wall when the mortars were landing. Right at the breach. And when I built the mission, I made sure that it was like 
where the mortars were landing, no matter where we were, we were going to be pretty safe from them because I knew about the fragmentation. But otherwise, yeah, that mission went excellent. That was good fun, actually, and both um, both of our teams worked quite well together. Yeah, I think I might stick to making more yeah infantry-based missions. Those sort of stock standard missions that we can replay if we ever need to. Because I'm sure everyone's yeah. played uh, my Genesis mission lots of times. Because I use that as like a reference point. Yeah, it's always good to have something to fall back on. And then we had a uh, Bricks Island yeah. assault. assault. I was no. leading that one. So How did that one go? Because I did miss that one. That was a good one. So uh, it had some new stuff in it. So we had divers. So a squad Yo. lead, I got the divers in there like, I guess, 20 minutes before to pick an LZ. Actually, sorry, before we go on to that, just with the Sivivac, um, we did something new, which was, a, even though I stuffed up the dates and everything was done on the same day, uh, about an hour before the mission started, I got two guys to go in as a sniper team, not to kill people, but just to look and spot enemies, and they marked the entire map and uploaded the briefing for the website. I think we call that a recon team. Yeah, a recon team. Hey, uh, well, they had sniper rifles, but they're a recon team. Anyway, yeah, that was uh, Hopstar and myself. Yeah, they mark. Oh, oh, fine, man. You can tell me what you thought of it. That was uh, definitely a in, definitely new, interesting thing that we did. Um, still not used to doing that just yet, but it was good fun. Yeah. We definitely like, got to. Like, the idea behind it was some people can't make Saturday night, so I thought on Tuesday night I'll um get the guys that can't make Saturday to do the recon part, so that way they know exactly where all the enemies are. It makes the briefing look really nice, and you got arrows on the map. Um, nice to sneak around a bit. First thing, I stuffed up the dates, so we did everything on the same day. So we had our first Tuesday tack. And second thing, we barely ever looked at that map. But it was a nice touch, I suppose. And I'll I probably for be mortars. doing that again. Yeah, mortars. I would um, use the concentrations and just make some approximate rangings on that. In case I needed to fire on them. Yeah. Otherwise, back to Rick's mission. Uh, so we got the divers to go in there. They, got, they jumped out of the helicopter into the water. That all went well. No, like, catastrophes. Then we had a designated marksman sitting on the side of the chopper. So no, I think it was in the, the pilot seat. Or co-pilot using the, um, the thermal camera to scan the island. So it was that island up the north of Altus. And then my team went in with boats. And we uh, just basically moved around the place and looked for the camo tents or anything that resembled mortar sites. I think we destroyed two mortar sites and two, like, MG sites before we had... Uh, Casualties that couldn't walk and stuff because they'd been injured, so he Kazavak those guys and got everybody off the island safely. Yeah, a trial by fire for the advanced medical system. Yes. The advanced medical system, I teach it as you're going to have to learn on your feet. Like, there's no sitting down and doing all like the paperwork stuff. You basically, I just tell you, this does this, this does this, this does this. Go figure it out for yourself. You got any problems, just radio me. Yeah, I'd ask Paz a few times, uh, Hey, his blood pressure is just below 80. Is it safe to give him this? Blah, blah, blah. I've run out of fluids. What do I do? Yeah. yeah so I, the idea with that is, like, I play the medic, then the assistant medic learns, and then the week after that, the assistant medic plays the actual medic, and I just play as the worst assistant in the world. And if you can get through that, well, then you can pretty much do exactly what I can do, which is just guess my way through it. <laughs> because then sometimes somebody passes out, you've got no idea what's wrong with them. And it just comes down to figuring out why Ace decided that this person who's perfectly healthy is now unconscious. Can I just point out something as well with the diver team? That the underwater radios are freaking awesome. Oh, they and, work. hey? They work. Yeah, you gotta do yeah. control tilt. Oh, wow. And then shift P to set it as well. And then with the divers as well, when you're underwater, your long range and squad radio don't actually work. Yeah, yeah, they're not supposed to, but I didn't know you had diving radios. Yeah, yeah it's just because uh, I watched Az's video and there's some, there were some questions about why I said I was going radio silent. Oh, okay. So what, because is the diving radio in the radio slot, or...? No, it's uh, attached to the rebreather. Ah, oh, okay. Didn't Talking about that. TFR here, Task Force yes. Radio. Yes. Or task Force Arrowhead Radio. Alright, um... I'm just trying to think of who got footage of what. Oh, yeah, sorry to Napoleon and Shulker, their first game with us, and they're unconscious for most of it. <laughs> they didn't have enough fluids to bring them back yeah. up. So, yeah, we made bleeding not as bad, and we yeah. just trained everybody on how to use tourniquets tonight. Napoleon still did very well without yeah, being he alive. Yeah, he had that usual new person, a little bit shy, like, didn't want to use the rocket launcher in case he marked it up, but it doesn't really matter. 
That's part. That's part of it. You don't learn how to use it unless you use it. Um, I everything else on that you mission. Know what? I'm just going to reference Az's channel in general because I know he got most of the footages. Ursh, yeah. you got some, didn't you? No, I, I have, but I haven't had the time to do anything with it okay. yet. Okay, well then you're not getting the reference. <laughs> you're going to see uh, Az's um, Az is flying. Been, yeah, Az has been oh, putting out a lot of videos. That's not fair. He can fly, he's just light blind, I guess, for some point of it. It's foggy. Uh, I've been a bit late in the videos. Oh, well, I'm out of ideas for that. Missions yeah, and all that. Oh, well, it's missions covered. Yeah, that's like the Excellent. main topic. Cool. So, I think we were going to have a little bit of a chat about loadouts, specifically for the TAC, because of course when it comes to, uh, not TAC, but the pub server, because when it comes to TAC, we have everybody assigned, it's all realistic. Yeah, or you get so. what you're given. Yeah, and you do as you tell. Um, and there's no scrounging of weapons from the enemy, because that just leads to friendly fire. Fires yeah. an AK, and yeah. Hell. Um, but those times we go on the pub server, people tend to have their own preferred, and let's be honest, and ludicrous loadout. Sorry, can we go back to the um, attack loadout? Yep. Yeah. You say you get what you're given, but I get my um, AT rifle for me to just stock up on GLs for me because I know the 8 isn't going to be enough for what I want to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. it's up to the mission maker and how many he wants to give you. And again, you basically get what you're given. Like, I mean, I never put a supply box in my mission. Because I don't reckon you guys need a supply box. Supply boxes should be like in the middle of a mission. They shouldn't be at the start where you just load up as much as you can. The only thing yeah, that's ever like missing is a mule. <laughs> mule the ammo. Well, yeah. then you're supposed to tell me before I update the framework if you reckon we're low on GLs. Whatever you no, reckon. It's like, probably like a responsible yeah, amount, but eight, just, eight yeah. It's responsible because you can fit eight in the front of your chest if you've counted the pouch holes. Pouch holes. Yeah, oh, well, you know, those little things you put the grenades <laughs> yeah. things in. <laughs> So, you know, when you get shot in the chest, one of those things fucking explodes. <laughs> Jesus. Ready? What were we talking about? Loadouts. Yes. Pub loadouts. Yeah. loadouts. So, I think Paz can start this because he's already made a little uh, video so he can reference it and he can explain the kind of why he did it. Yeah, it wasn't really a teaching video. It was more to just rip on Azza. Because whenever you play on the pub server with Azza, he has a machine gun with like a sniper rifle scope. And that's about all he does. He snipes with his machine gun that's bipodded to the floor with um, ace weapon resting and server weapon resting, so he's dead accurate. And he basically just lets off, like... <laughs> oh, yeah, and he's got, like, a Titan missile launcher. Because, you know, it's the pub server, you're, you're having fun. But when you click the random button on the virtual... Sorry, on the arsenal, basically, you get as his gear whenever you click the random button. You can click <laughs> that button as much as you want. You will always get as his gear. You should try it. <laughs> But otherwise, the rest of that video is basically um, our pub server when we first, um, when Boydie made the first build. Uh, Boydie is one of the guys that he scripted the mission tack ops on our pub server, and he basically did it all from scratch. He left the um, the fatigue on, but the fatigue was really high, which is really good because it meant you had to get a vehicle and actually drive to places instead of you know your general just jump on a server and go for a run for like 10k's if you're machine gun that has 20 belts worth of ammo. Or, you know, you you get tired and you can't walk anymore, so you kill yourself and parachute like 10 meters up the road. Yeah. And we got sick of that, so we just turned off the fatigue system. And we put more vehicles at base to sort of encourage it. But yeah, that video is basically to just, I don't know, I just got really annoyed that people were killing themselves because they weren't bothered to either walk or take a vehicle so they could reuse the parachute system. So it didn't matter that people were doing some of it because as you say the, the pub server is more fun yeah pub servers and pubs like we know you guys want to have fun that's why there's no fatigue on there anymore yep if oh. you want to you know get fatigued and play the game properly you'd play a attack night which you're more than welcome to come and play one of the things i think we have tried in the past is um pvp with access to the arsenal leads to some very interesting have attempts. we had that it uh, it's been a, it's been a, a long while. time ago. Yeah. yeah, a long ages ago. I don't, that I was, don't that was ge generated some interesting ones. So I know I've got several loadouts that I have um, that I use. And I'm a little bit annoyed that, that Bohemia finally fixed something. I always had this fantastic layout which uh, always surprised people because, you know, you see someone running ahead of you, 
cutting between buildings, and everyone usually clocks what primary weapon they're carrying. They never know what secondary. So I could hurtle past with my little MX, possibly my MX carbine, and then the next thing they know is they're being shelled with a 40 mil grenade launcher because it wasn't showing up the proper little M320 that's in my leg pack. But um, sadly, Bohemia has now correctly added the models to your leg, so no longer can you be a sneaky little git. Do oh, that. but if you're not wearing the default uniforms, <laughs> ah. and those lead packs aren't there. Yeah, that only does it with the basic uniforms. That is true. So I can still do that. So, Ursh, what is your absolute loadout of choice? My absolute yeah, loadout of choice? One. Primary, secondary if you want. And, if, uh, I know, if I know I'm not just going to be blowing stuff up, I go with... Um, I go with what I'd call my ranged. And that is... If I remember correctly, I always wear the CT, uh, CTG. Of course, because you're English. Because, yes, yes, you know, CTRG. Um, <laughs> and then in terms of rifle, I've found that I like using the SIG 5.56 from the Marksman Pack. Stick a bipod on that, and I do actually tend to use the just the RCO scope. That allows me to try and hit things from far away, and then gives me enough uh, firepower in close quarters. Then I always go with a secondary, which is the M320. So got a little bit of everything. But I then stick with light rigs so that I'm relatively quick. What about you, Spanny? Um, I usually just grab anything with grenade launcher, really, and then I ditch the secondary for more grenades. So what, you know, like GL and the grenade launcher? Sorry? You, you're a smoke man, flares? Um, it's mostly HE or DP. But, um, if it's an item, I carry flares. I don't know, I just... Using them is so fun in armor. It like is. in armor two, I was rubbish at it. But now in armor three, with the three D sights and all that, it's just a dream to fuck around with the GL. Where are you, fireman? Well, I'm along the lines of Ash as well because I prefer the lightweight approach. But I carry, I tend to carry a DMR. Depends on what we're fighting. If we're fighting CSAT, I take something like a Cyrus or the NATO equivalent. Which is the uh, 9.3 rifle with an MRCO scope. Gives you a nice bit of medium and close range. With the CTRG rolled sleeve and a slash bandolier. Because you can carry just enough ammo in the slash bandolier and you can run faster than anyone. It means you have to come out and pick us up and drag us back to cover when we're shot. Pretty much. Yeah. Now, I've always been a fan. I always have a black assault pack on very close to buying one of those, like in real life, but uh, I don't need one, so I'm not going to buy one. But I always have a shotgun in my assault pack, and an M4A1, because the M4A1 is my favorite gun in the world. And it's always fun to pull out a shotgun out of your backpack. <laughs> as well as the M320 is a nice secondary weapon for blowing up a room before you go in with the shotgun. Either that or you just, you know, put a couple small demo charges in there, and just take out the whole building. So I can say, I'm, I don't know, I'm more of a breach in close quarters. Whereas you guys pick your DMRs. Well, I do that because, you know, often it's a bit tricky to go in with my other favourite, which is either the, which is usually the M249. Pip. I, um, because I think we all know that I generally can't hit anything. So it's more a question of quantity than quality. <laughs> so. I'm also not of smoke grenades and chem lights. I absolutely love, like, I, I never actually learnt how to script, kind of just like figuring it out as I go, but like the first one I ever did was um, throwing smoke grenades that would uh, like radio for artillery strikes or radio for helicopters. That was awesome. Yeah, I think the very first one I made, I threw a smoke grenade, it called down artillery, throw a different coloured smoke, helicopter would land, and it wouldn't take off until you jumped in there, and it'd um, return you to base. You need more of that. I, I think the problem with throwing smoke and then artillery is that the artillery is close enough for you to throw smoke at it. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I put those on the GL only. Oh, okay. So the GL smoke would do it. But yeah, I threw all those scripts out. I can always rebuild them, I guess, but uh, they're working so nice. I just never found, like, an application for them. Because I think the best mission I ever had was when we were soaking D one night and um, the radios had a problem for, like, whatever reason. And, like, all the squads had... Sorry all the fire teams or the squads that ever had to mark their positions with coloured smoke. And that was like the absolute best night of my life. 
Like using Except everything else B tech does, right, Puz? Huh? Except for everything you're a B tech. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> best joint ops night of my life. More like it? Huh? More like it? Yeah, yeah. Good save. Yeah. Ah, oh, because I, I, with the um, vehicles in the framework, I give you guys like a little um, signals pack. I like to, with all the loadouts in the framework, I try to pick packs. So, like, you got a first aid pack. Where you know you got a couple of drugs, you got a couple of bandages, and all the vehicles have that exact same kit in them. Same with the um, signals. So you got like a hand flare, you got cam lights which you can attach to the vehicle, and you got IR strobes, as well as you know a coloured smoke. And if you well, ever get stuck, you can throw like a cam light into regular smoke. I think that having those scripts would be particularly useful because although we've now got people who are you know, backed up for doing mortar, etc. We don't necessarily want to put people in there all the time. And I don't think many people, when they do gear up, they have that option, think about different coloured smokes, for example. Well, I'm trying to think. The framework, like, each um, faction has their own colour. So NATO's blue, CSAT's red, AAF is uh, yellow, and um, sorry, AAF is green, and FIA is yellow. But... Squad leads never use the coloured smokes. I don't know if that's just because we don't have enough people or because we don't have enough helicopter landings to need them. But um, I've, I've given used, them medic green smokes as well. I've tried using uh, you know blue for friendly, red for op for, in terms of marking yeah. in the past. But you have to yeah, have we did run. that for when I was running Cass one time. You when you were taking section. Yeah, I do remember seeing the different colours of smoke. Yeah, because I, I know Fireman knows all the smokes and what they do. I think purples and airstrike. I think a really good pub server I played on once, if you threw a blue smoke anywhere on the map, some dude in a medical truck would always rock up and come and save your ass. Like, <laughs> as long as you're within the AO. Like, those three guys that were just playing medic non-stop, like, on that server. One guy would drive the truck, two guys would jump out and help you out, and then they'd, you know, just p completely disappear. Like, blue smoke, if it was there, those dudes would rock up every time. And I think the guy in the passenger seat was like one of them journalists, people with the press thing on, and he'd do like the full mock up where he'd like pretend <laughs> to give you the, like the journalism. <laughs> it, I must admit, it was a very nice uh, experience. I think that was, oh, it would have been on just one of your standard domination servers, but obviously that was like oh, six months ago. Oh, sorry, I remember the it was Toxic Sludge's uh, light script. What's that? Uh, one? He's, got his, he's got a YouTube channel as well, and he's on the Armour Reddit. What's, what's that one? Uh, um, I use his dead. script for turning the lights off, oh, like okay. street lights and house lights. Uh, so toxic sludge. I'll probably get sludge. a link off you. Yep. Oh, also carry on. Quick, I just um, no, no, that's alright. I was gonna say a quick shout out to the um, guys at F3 because they helped us modify our framework a little bit so the um, zombie stuff would work. They can turn what you might spend an hour and a half trying to figure out into like two seconds of just, oh, yeah, here's your problem. Here's how you fix it. Yeah, that was a... Uh, Snipers. Thank you. Really handy. <coughs> Alright, yeah. so it's loadout, eh? I think yeah. so. Logic, oh. we didn't talk about it recommended once. Oh, recommended. Ah, uh, yes. I think, we, I think everyone knows what a responsible loadout yeah. is. 8 to 14 mags, standard uh, assault rifle. I don't believe people do. I think I've spent enough time on the pub surface to know that there's at least 25% of the people who turn up on there who yeah, don't know what that is. The RGO grenade is offensive, the RGO grenade is defensive. Don't throw the RGO grenade unless you can run away from it. You're behind something at yeah. the time. Is that fragmentation in Ace? Oh, you're gone. It's funny, but... Don't know. Eight mags if you've got an assault rifle. Yep. So, as a standard infantryman, what would you recommend? So, not a not a anti tank specialist, not a engineer, just a standard rifleman. What would your recommended rifle. loadout be? Eight mags. Eight mags, some medical gear, two grenades, two smokes. Yep. I'd oh, personally thanks. recommend a sidearm with two mags, just in case. Ah, you don't uh, need a sidearm. Too much weight. Just in case for what? Just in case you need to give it to somebody else because they got armoured. Ah. Uh. So we have Logi. Yeah. That means logistics. <laughs> Tell us about logistics then. Oh. Uh, those of us who missed. Ooh, segue. Thank segue. you. Uh, logistics. Well, we, it's not It's not really existent at the moment for us at least. Our player count's not too, is 
too low to have someone dedicated purely to logistics. I think it doesn't matter how many people you got, your player account isn't really like going to suit logistics. Yeah, I think the better way to do it is have Logi responsibilities paired up with another one. Like yeah, um, artillery. Yeah, like Artie. So you put the two mortars in a. Uh, so the two mortar backpacks. A truck, but it's loaded in entirely with ace. And yeah, just drive around ditching out ammo. Or medical, or whatever. But, um, yeah, Paz just did a video on what MCC and Ace have been working on to help with that like, fortification building. Yeah, that was my fault because I hadn't updated my MCC. I was using like version 13, they're up to version, sorry, I was using version 12, they're up to version 16. And I could never figure out where this base building idea came from that was in my head this entire time. And it turns out updating my MCC, I was like, oh, what's this SQL menu? And yeah, now you can base build. So that, so, yeah. so that's our not, bad, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not a new thing, so even, my, even though my video, I'm losing my shit, and a lot of our guys is like, whoa, you could do this now? Yeah, that was my bad. <laughs> well, kind of all of ours. Yeah, I, I spent like an hour looking on the GitHub on Ace, trying to figure out where the hell this Logi thing was coming from. Turns out it was MCC doing it. Yeah, so, so yeah. in our use for Logi. <laughs> I don't know, logic can be fun, it's just what you make of it. Yeah, I think it depends on the scope. I can see it being quite useful if we do any of those um, big events that we've talked about, like the coast-to-coast -coast with yeah. other groups. I'd love to do a coast-to-coast. -coast. I think, um, who's that other group? One second, let me just check my bookmarks. Or a sort of event where it's like capture and hold, the like a sector AEF, control thing. The AEF this year on Easter Day did a six-hour attack. And that was, um, uh, for us, I think it started at 6 in the morning till 12 in midday, but they're on American time. The they AEF? It. Yeah, the AEF. Australian Expeditionary Force. Ah, that's that what they're called. They do one on Easter, but it's like 12 hours, I know that. Yeah, they, they did a 6 hour Easter one this year. Yeah, probably Australian like time. Though. <laughs> no, I, I could have sworn, it must have started at 12 in the day and finished at 6 in the afternoon. That sounds right. Maybe that sounds more reasonable. Yeah. It was a patrol probably more of them, yeah. Yeah, they just did a big walk around the map and just cleared out everything. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, you can do on that pub server if you want, but, um... I don't That's know, it's organized. nice when it's geared up when it's organised. Our plugs per minute have been really low, quick, we gotta... <laughs> Our numbers have been going up as well. Yeah, yes. we got a couple of new guys. People have been coming back from holidays, them. and we got some new guys. The pub server's been hitting it off, which is great. Some of us have been getting internet back. Yeah. <laughs> that always helps. So what, we're, we're eventually going to fill that entire section. We get so close to having 15 people to fill a section that suddenly, oh, let's fill out a vehicle or a weapons team instead. Well, I think we should probably try and round everybody up for a, a full bore. You know, yeah. Commit well, to a certain Saturday and see well, what tonight, we can get to now. Which is a Thursday night, we had 15 people. That's a full section. But normally we'll have like a vehicle driver or a weapons team. I reckon we're up to being able to field the 20. Yeah. Reliably. With that, with that base building, I like how a supply box can turn into either a base, uh, sorry, not a base, a, um, just an FOB bunker, uh, or a MG or an AA, like statics. So you don't need to carry like the individual thing, you can just carry a supply crate and turn it into any of those. So it's handy in the, uh, I guess, versatility of it. How accurate is the placement? Ah, well... If you try and do it using the ace menu, good luck. Like wherever it's going to go is where, wherever it's going to go. You right. see me in the video how terrible it is. Yes, I, I think PDA seems to work but better. But if you use the PDA, which is the GPS, it's excellent. Like if you okay. tell it to face north at this point, it'll spawn exactly there. Awesome. You can, can also transfer that um, power to engineers as well, rather than have the squad leader dictate it. What's that? Yeah, it's the um, just this group. Like the leader of that group in the game, I believe. Yeah, any 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 group leader. Oh, okay, cool. So, so as long as the engineers are uh, yeah, cool. So and that way you can have your forward teams like clear out the next area, so you can have a defensive line being set up. Yeah, I guess the only thing you need to watch out for is building FOBs. Somebody just suddenly clicks the FOB button, and you get a big dirt mound pop up. That could be useful if you're being fired on. Yeah. <laughs> it would also be like. Game breakingly immersion, terrible. Possibly. Possibly, yeah. Is there any news on whether there's going to be um, trenches? 
I heard uh, rumors. Ace was talking about putting in trenches. I don't know how it's going to work because if you've looked at the ground on Altus when you lay down and crawl, it's got that double layer graphic effect. Yep. So I have no idea how it's going to handle that. I'm Is sure it Sorry, okay. Uh, uh, I'm sure it'll work because I mean, when you put down that um, mound for base building, that yeah. does work, but you can sort of like end up inside the mounds as you'll see in the video. They'd probably do the same sort of thing as they did in Armour 2, where you have like a line of dirt and then a line of dirt on the other side. Right, and you just lay in the middle. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything else I can mention about base building. Are there any other bits and pieces for mod news or server news that we need All to right. cover? All the news stuff, so don't update your stuff for this weekend. Otherwise, MCC is at version 16, must update that, or it's called the R16. Update your MCC. Update your ACE. ACE is now at 3.3.3, I think. 3.3.1, somewhere there. Anyway, don't update your ACE the next week, same thing. Both the RHSs had an update. The Russian one, they didn't really add anything new. The American one, they added the Mark 32 grenade launcher. And the Glock 17 pistol. I'm still figuring out what class to give the Mark 32 to, because I don't really think we need a six round grenade launcher. Personally, I recommend with that one, it'd be part of the demo team, so you have like a demo uh, offensive specialist. I was thinking of putting in a breacher, or the breacher has a shotgun and the Mark 32 in his backpack or something like that. Close quarters man with a grenade launcher? That's going badly. No, no, I mean, like, you, you punch them through the door, and then you clear in with a shotgun. Oh, yeah, that could work. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, one other mod was Lates. Lates had an update. But yeah, all those mods five. don't update them until, I guess, after Tac Night. If you update them before that, I'm not going to help you in fixing your mods. What else have you got? Yeah. Easy. Nope, I got nothing. Nope. Me neither. I'm out. How is your tea, Echelon? Uh, getting cold, but otherwise lovely. Hey, well, wrap it up there. Yep. 